from New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with Don Chapman. Best Plays. A series of hour-length dramas based on the famous theatrical books begun by the late Burns Mantle, now edited by the distinguished drama critic of the New York Daily News, John Chapman. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Good evening. We're beginning a new program. A program titled, as your announcer has just said, Best Plays. Goodness knows plays on the radio aren't new, but we like them when they're good. This evening, we're lucky to have a good one. The play is Winter Set by Maxwell Anderson, and in the principal roles are Burgess Meredith and Maureen Stapleton. Mr. Meredith really laid claim to stardom when he created the role of the vengeful son in the original production of Winter Set. It is the best possible theater to have him back in this role this evening. And for the girl, there is, I think, the best possible choice in Maureen Stapleton. She has climbed steadily as a young actress of great dramatic power. Her most recent triumph on Broadway was in the part of the Italian mother in Tennessee Williams' hit, The Rose Tattoo. So now I'll give the radio stage over to Miss Stapleton, Mr. Meredith, and Mr. Anderson. The play is Winter Set. <laughs> It is morning. The morning is early and dark and in December. In the basement of a tenement facing New York's East River, a young man is alone. A girl enters the room and the play begins. Scott? Yes, sis? Put away your violin and talk with me. What will we talk about? Scott, you've stayed at home here three days now. You haven't gone out all day. Something frightens you. Father's frightened, too. You see too much. I saw a letter on the floor of your room. It said, don't get me wrong, but stay in out of the rain the next few days. I thought I burned that letter. Later you did. And then what was printed about the Estrella gang, you hid it from me. You and Father, what is it about this murder? I don't know. Why don't you tell them, God? If it's true what they say, you knew all the time Romagna wasn't guilty and could have said so. Everybody knew Romagna wasn't guilty. But they weren't listening to evidence in his favor. They didn't want it. They don't want it now. Was that why they never called on you? So far as I knew, they never even heard of me. I can assure you, I knew nothing about it. Then why, for these three days, have we dimmed the lights and gone early to bed, speaking in whispers? Shh! See there? What? A shadow, then, across the window. God, son, go to the other room. Miriamne, dim the lights. Someone followed me. You'll excuse us for not knocking. Sometimes it's best to come in quiet. Stand against the door shadow and see that no one else comes. Yes, Trak. Hello, Trak. Who's the family? They're my father and my sister. Happy to meet you. Step into another room. The boy and I have something to talk about. He said nothing, Trak. Not a word. Go on out. The girl, too. Come, Miriamne. Yes, father. How are you, Truck? Huh? They soaked me once too often in that vat of poison hell they keep upstate to soak men in. And I'm rotten inside. <coughs> I'm all one liquid rot inside where I had lungs once. Like yourself. Uh, you're the skinny kind that lives forever. Yeah, he gave me half a year to dock at the gate. Six months I get and the rest is dirt six feet. What do you want, Truck? I just got out, you see. And I pay my first call on you. Who started looking this thing up? Some college professor. If you saw his article, you know as much as I do. It wasn't you turning state's evidence? Truck, use your brain. The case was closed. They burned Romagna for it and that finished it. I haven't talked. And nobody's talked to me. Your old man knows. He's as safe as shadow there. Yeah, there could be people safer than that one. Oh! You! You'd be safer dead along with some other gorillas. It's beginning to look as if you feel safer with everybody, Jim. Shut up! 
How much does your sister know? She read my name in the professor's pamphlet, and she was scared, the way anybody would be. She got nothing from me. Anyway, she'd go to the chair herself before she'd send me there. We got nothing to worry about, Trot. You're forgetting the judge. The morning papers say Judge gone to enough. He's not. He's got that trial on his mind and been going around proving to everybody he was right. Stopping people in the street to prove it. And now he's nuts entirely, and nobody knows where he is. Why don't they? Because he's on the loose somewhere. They've got the police of three cities looking for him. Well, why should that worry? He's crazy, ain't he? You're generally chief. I said for you to shut up. All right, all right. Goth? Maybe you're lying to me, and maybe you're not. You stay at home a few days, and I mean stay at home. If I have to go looking for you, you'll stay a long time, whatever I find you. Sure, Jack. Sure. We'll get out of here, Shadow. God? Yes, Father, he's gone. Who is he, God? What did he want? You'd kill me if I told you who he was. Then don't say it, son. Yes, I'll say it. I was with a gang one time that robbed a payroll. I saw a murder done. And Trocastrella dead. If that got out, I'd go to the chair. And so would he. God, it's not true. I've held it in too long. I can't sit forever and wait for Troc with his gun, wait for the police with a warrant. All the while to think Romania dead for the murder, dead for the thing that Troc did while I looked on. I could have saved Romania. But I sat here and I let him die instead of me because I wanted to live. Well, I mean to have it over. I've lived with ghosts and lied too long. I... <laughs> I should have known. I thought you hard and sullen, Garth, my son. You were a child and hurt with a wound that might have healed. All men have crimes. You're not alone. I'm alone with this. Then if you must say it, rise up and cry it out if you have heart to die. Oh, I, I can't. I'm a coward. I always was. Be quiet and live. <laughs> live even if I have to crawl. <laughs> Father, is it better to tell a lie and live? Yes, child. It's better. If I had to do it, I think I'd die. Yes, child. Because you're young. Is that the only reason? The only reason. This is the corner where we turn, I think. It should be down along the river. I thought you were never coming east again, Mio. Something changed my mind. A girl? No. No, I got wind of something out west. Some college professor investigating the trial and turning up new evidence. And I think he has something. And it occurred to me I might follow it up with a little sleuthing on my own account. I have done a little. It leads me to somewhere right in this neighborhood. And that's how I happen to be here. I'll never let you get anywhere with it, Mio. I told you that before. I know you did. The state can't afford to admit it was wrong, you see. Not when there's been that much of a row kicked up over it. So for all practical purposes, the state was right and your father robbed the payroll. There's still such a thing as evidence. It's something you can buy. Go out and make yourself a pot of money and you can buy all the justice you want. Forget it, Mio. This thing didn't happen to you. For my heritage, they've left me one thing only. And that's to be my father's voice crying up out of the earth in the quicklime where they stuck him. That's what they thought of the man that was my father and my mother. Well, I tell you, these county burials are swift and cheap and they run for profit. Out of the house and into the ground, your wife of a dead dog. Wait, here's some Romania spawn left. Something crawls here, something they call a son. Why didn't he die along with his mother? Well, ease him out of town, boys. Ease him out. See, you're not too gentle. He might come back. And I will come back. I'll hang the carrion around their necks that made it. 
Maybe I can sleep then. Or even live. You have to try it. You won't let me alone. Is that the reason we're in this neighborhood? That's the reason. Let's ask that girl there sitting on the steps. Maybe she knows him. She's going back inside. She looks afraid of something. Hey, miss, wait. What? I'm looking for a man who's said to live here, isn't he? Why are you crying? What's the matter? Nothing. I'm sorry. It's all right. What's your name? Mary Omni. Mary Omni? There's no such name. My mother's name was Miriam. So they called me Mary Omni. Ah, meaning little Mary? Yes. Mary Omni! Lucia! Hey, maybe you don't know. Tonight we play goodbye to the piano. Police say no more organ grinders in the streets. Tomorrow, no more good time. So tonight, Lucia, we will play and Mariam will dance. Will you dance with me, Mariam? Yes, if you wish. Hooray! Come on. Hey! Here come on, we set him down. Use it ahead, use it feet. The last time of the round. No more money with a music man. The last time of all. When you dance. Mary Omni, your face lights from within. It's a white chalice holding fire, a flower and flame. This is your face. Maybe it rains tonight, or maybe it snows tomorrow, eh? Tonight we dance goodbye. Hey, hey, you! Hey! What do you want? Try it! I told you before about playing that thing on the street. This is no street. This is an alley. Cut it! Cops. What's the matter? It's. It's the last time we, we we dance goodbye to the piano. Yeah, You'll right. dance goodbye to something else if I catch a crank and I think again. Hey, Captain, what's the matter with the music? It's against the law. There you have it. A perfect example of capitalistic oppression. In a land where music should be free as air and the art should be encouraged, a uniform minion of the rich steps in and puts a limit to the innocent enjoyments of the poor. <laughs> Why can't we dance on the river bank to the strains of a barrel organ? It's breaking an order. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hey, Tar. Tar, give that cop a chance. He's doing his job. It's not... Wait a minute. It's not so easy to represent the law. Think what he does for all of us stamping out crime. What ordinance were we violating? Now, don't trouble him, my friend. This badge here is a simple man of simple tastes. He's easily confused when faced with complex issues. He may reflect on returning home, that is, so far as he's capable of reflection, <laughs> that he was kitted out of his uniform pants. And in his fury, when this dawns on him, he may smack his wife down. <laughs> Hooray! That'll be enough out of you, Professor. Sir, now, wait a minute, uh, officer. It's apparent that the least competent among us here can judge that you've handled this situation very badly. You should have gone about your task more subtly, isn't that right? The glove of velvet, the hand of iron. Shut that hole in your face. What? For that remark, I'll be satisfied with nothing less than an unconditional apology. I have an old score to settle with policemen, brother, because they're fools and fatheads. And you're one of the most fatuous fatheads that ever walked his feet flat collecting grass. I'll give you an apology. Right in the face with the stick. One moment, one moment, officer. Whatever they may have said or done, let these people disperse in peace. It is better you go softly, lest when they are dead you see their eyes bleeding and their outstretched hands touch you. What's the matter? Are you crazy? I am a judge of some standing. Not in your city, but in another with similar statutes. Well, maybe they understand you better than the town you come from. I don't get your drift. Now get out of here, all of you. Go along. What are you trying to do? Start a riot? Ah, that's in the best police tradition. Incite a riot yourself and then accuse the crowd. It won't be pleasant if I decide to let somebody have it. Now get along, all of you. Miriam, in five minutes I'll be back. Go on there, off the street. Will you meet me? Yes, I'll meet you. Move along, keep moving there, keep moving, keep moving. Omni? Yes. I only came back to tell you not to wait. Go on in. I want to stay. No, go in. And when you get inside where it's warm and you love each other and mother comes to kiss her darling, you tell them to hang on to it while they can and believe while they can that this is a warm, safe world. And Jesus finds his lambs and carries them in his bosom. Well, I've seen some lambs that Jesus missed. 
And if they ever want the truth, you tell them that nothing's guaranteed in this climate except that it gets cold in winter. Or on this earth except you die sometime. I have no mother. And my people are Jews. Ah. Then you know something about it. Yes. What do you believe in? <laughs> Nothing. How can one? Ah, it's easy if you're a fool. You see the words in books. Honor, it says there. Chivalry, freedom, heroism, enduring love. And these are words on paper. Well, it's something to have them there. You'll get them no place else. What hurts you? Just that, that you'll get them no place else. Why should you want them? I'm alone, that's why. You see those lights along the river cutting across the rain? Well, those are the hearths of Brooklyn. And up this way, the love nests of Manhattan. And they turn their points like knives against me, outcast to the world, snake in the streets. I don't want a handout. I sleep and eat. Do you want me to go with you? Where? Where you go. You little fool. What made you say that? I don't know. If you have a home, you stay in it. I ask for nothing. I've schooled myself to ask for nothing. I take what I get and I get along. If I fell for you, that's my lookout. I'll starve it down. Wherever you go, I'd go. What do you know about loving? I know. Tell me your name. Mio. Mio. Yeah. And now, Mary Omni. Little Mary Omni will go in and take up quietly where she dropped them all her small housewifely cares. When I first saw you, I heard myself saying, this is the face that launches ships for me. And if I owned a dream or half a dream, we'd share it. But I have no dream. Enduring love, oh God, mockery. And yet I have blood enough in my veins. It goes like music singing because you're here. And my body turns as if you were the sun and warm. And this men call love in happier times before the Freudians taught us to blame it on the glands. And go in where you breathe too much of my atmosphere. Catch death for me. Oh, I will take my hands and weave them to a little house. And there you shall keep a dream. <laughs> I could use a dream. I could even use a house. You're laughing at me, Neil. I tell you, there's death about me. You're a child. And I'm alone and I'm half mad with hate and longing. I'll let you love me. I'll love you in return. And then, then what happens? Something most unpleasant. Well, love in a boxcar, love among the children. I've seen too much of that. Where are we to live? In the same house that you make with your two hands mystically out of air? Neo. Neo in all the unwanted places and wastelands that roll up into the darkness out of sun and into sun out of dark. There should be one empty for you and me. No. Then go now and leave me. I'm only a girl you saw in the tenements, and there's been nothing said. Very young me. Mio. Uh. Why did you speak to me when you first saw me? I knew then. And I met you because I must see you again. And we danced together, and my heart hurt me. Never, 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 though they should bind me down and tear out my eyes, would I ever hurt you now. Oh, take me with you, Mio. Let them look for us. Wherever there is to look, but we'll be away. Mary Omni, when I was four years old, we climbed through an iron gate, my mother and I, to see my father in prison. And he stood in the death cell, and he put his hand through the bars, and he said, Mio, I have only this to leave you, that I love you, and I'll love you after I die. And love me then, Mio. When this hard thing comes on you that you must live a man despised for your father. And this rain that I feel cold here on my face and hands will find him under 13 feet of clay in prison ground. Lie still and rest, father. I've not forgotten. When I forget, may I lie blind as you. You love someplace else, little Miriam. Get your children in some other image more acceptable to the state. Mio, what was his name? Your father's name? Bartolomeo Romagna. 
I'm not ashamed of it. Why are you here? Because I'm a cry out of a shallow grave, and all roads are mine that'll revenge you. Mia, why here? Why here? Well, I can't tell you that. No. No, there's someone lives here, lives not far, and you mean to see him. You mean to ask him. Who told you that? His name is Garth. Garth as. Who are you, then? Seem to know a good deal about me. Were you sent to say you, this? You said there was death about you. Yes, but nearer than you think. Go before you're seen or spoken to. You tell me why? As I love you, I can't tell you. And I can never see you. I'll go where I please. You think it's easy for me to send you away. Well, I find you if I want to see you. Never. I tell you, I'd bring you death. Those men coming. What? Get back in the shadows, out of sight. Who are they? Be quiet. Listen. All right, all right. I heard you the first time. You don't have to keep saying it over and over. I've seen men get like you, thinking they had to plug a couple of guys, and then a few more to cover it up, and then maybe a dozen more. You can't slough all the witnesses because every man you put away has friends. I said, all right. I said, fine. They're going to find this judge, and if they find him, it's just too bad. And I don't want to know anything about it. <coughs> and you don't either. You're through? Why, sure. We're through, too, you know. Yeah? Yeah, we're through. I've heard that said before. That was somebody died. Is that what you mean? This is what I mean, Shadow. Ah! Oh, wait, Neo. He's gone. That other one needs help. Stay here. No, I'll come with you. Here, here's where he went over the bank. There's no sign of Yes, look, look out there, floating there in the current. Oh, we can't help him. Well, let him go with the tide. Neo, let's go inside. No, not now, Mirialni. I'll say goodbye to you for a little while. I have some business to transact in this neighborhood. <laughs> Shall we open it? It would be better than sit and wonder who it was. I'll get it. I beg your pardon, sir. My name is Gaunt. Judge Gaunt. A name long known in the criminal courts and not unhonored there. How do you do, sir? Very well, sir. I shall lie under the deepest obligation if you will set an old man on his path. For I lack a homing instinct if the truth be known. I can put you on your way. Oh, you'd be wiser to wait a while. There's sleep falling. It's getting worse. Will you come in, sir? Thank you. On my word, I don't know why I came here. Nor how, nor when, nor what would explain it. Though such things are sometimes not quite accident. My name is Esdras. This is Garth, my son. Esdras. Garth Esdras. It is... It is not a usual name. No. I remember now. And it is not by accident I have come. Professor Hobhouse. That's the name. He wrote some trash about you trying to undermine the public confidence in justice in the courts. I knew it then. All he brings out about this testimony you might have given. It's true, I could have called you. But the case was clear. Romagna was known guilty and there was nothing to add. Indeed, we know it. Uh, I'll answer it. Yes, sir? May I come in? Will you state your business, sir? Your name is Ezra, so they told me outside. What do you want? Is that the name? Yes. I'll be quick and brief. I'm the son of a man who died many years ago for a payroll robbery in New England. You should be Garth Esdras, by what I've heard. Yes. You have some knowledge of this crime, if I can believe what I've read in the public prints, and it might be that your testimony, if given, would clear my father of any share in the murder. Now, you may not care whether he's guilty or not, and you may not know, but I do know, and I do care, and I've come to ask you face to face. Ask me what? What do you know of it? Well, this is what happened. I had known a few members of a gang one time up there, and after the murder, they picked me up because I looked like someone they saw in what was called the murder car. They held me a little while, but they couldn't identify me because I wasn't there when the thing occurred. Oh, that's the whole story. That's all I know of it. 
I came 3,000 miles to this dead end. If he was innocent and you know him so, believe it. And let the others believe as they like. Would you tell me how a man's to live and face his life if he can't believe the truth's like a fire and it'll burn through and be seen if it takes all the years there are? While I stand up and I have breath in my lungs, I'll be one flame of that fire. It's all the life I have. Then you must live so. One must live as he can. Yes. It's the only way that my father left me. Sir, if you mean to say that Bartolomeo Romagna was innocent, you are wrong. He was guilty. There may have been injustice from time to time by regrettable chance in our courts, but not in that case, I assure you. You assure me. You lie, whoever you are. My father was murdered. Romagna was found guilty by all due process of law and given his chance to prove his innocence. What chance? When a court panders to mob hysterics and a jury comes in loaded to soak an anarchist and a foreigner, it may be due process of law, but it's also murder. He should have thought of that before he spilled blood. He? Sir, I know too well that he was guilty. Who are you? Wait. The judge. At the trial, he was younger. But he had your face. Can it be that you're the man? Yes. Yes, I sat there as a child. I heard your voice. I watched that brahminical mouth. I knew even then that you meant no good to him. And now you're here to winnow out truth and justice, the fountainhead of the lies that slew him. Are you Judge Gaunt? I am. Yes. And tell me what damnation, what inferno would fit the toad that sat in robes and lied when he gave the charge and knew he lied. Judge that. I know and have known what bitterness can rise against the court when it must say, putting aside all weakness, that a man's to die. I can forgive you that, for you are your father's son, and you think of him as a son thinks of his father. Certain laws seem cruel in their operation. It's necessary that we be cruel to uphold them. This cruelty is kindness to those I serve. I don't doubt it. I know who it is you serve. May you be a judge sometime and know in what fear, through what nights long in fear, I scanned and verified and compared the transcripts of the trial. And still I found no error. I watched all modern comment, and so it centered finally on one fact. Garth Estrus was not called at the trial. And here he is. You have heard him. Would his deposition have justified a new trial? No, you would not. I have sought for evidence, and you have sought. Have you found it? Can you cite one fresh word in defense? The trial was shot full of lies, prearranged to lead the jury astray. Could you prove it? Yes. And if the jury were led astray, remember it's the jury by our Anglo-Saxon custom that finds for guilt or innocence. The judge is powerless in that matter. Not you. No, your charge misled the jury more than the evidence. Can it not be, and I ask this quite honestly, that the great injustice lies on your side and not mine? Can you be sure that you, who were touched closest by the tragedy, may not have lost perspective, may have brooded day and night on one theme, till your eyes are tranced and show you one side only? I see well enough. Is it not true wherever you walk, through the little town where you knew him well, or flying from it inland or by the sea? Still walking at your side and sleeping only when you too sleep. A shadow follows bleeding and holding out its hands to be delivered from shame. Oh. How do you know that? Because one specter haunted you and me and haunts you still. But for me, it is laid to rest. Now that my mind is satisfied, he died justly and not by error. You know that there's murder in me. There was murder in your sire, and it's to be expected. I say he died justly, and he deserved it. Yes, you'd like to have me kill you. That would prove your case. You won't get it from me. Oh, this sets him up. This sets him up in a gown, and deciding who's to walk above the earth, and who's to lie beneath. No, it's no good. This won't help. What I came to find, I found. 
And now I'll go. I will put you on your way. Doubtless, what information we need to get me home again, we'll find nearby. Yes, sir. The terminal, if you could walk so far. Uh, I'll manage. Uh, thank you. Oh, it's raining again. I'll lend you my coat. No, no, keep it. A little rain shouldn't matter to me. What will you do? Oh, let me sit here a minute. Carl? You should be asleep. I'm not sleeping. I'll be in the other room. He's all right. He'll leave soon. Mio. How? How did you come here? I live here. Hmm. My name is Ezra. Garth is my brother. The walls are thin. I heard what was said. I'm going. This is no place for me. What place would be better? I... It's better to go, just to go. Mio. I thought... That I'd fallen so low that there was no further, and now a pit opens beneath. It was bad enough he should have died, innocent. But if he were guilty, what's my life? What have I left to do? The son of a felon, and what they spat on me was earned, and I'm drenched with the stuff. I tell you that I lived by his innocence. I live to see it flash and blind them all. They can take away so little with all their words. Never believe them, Mio. Never. No, it was truth I wanted. Truth. Not the lies that you tell yourself or tell a woman or a woman tells you. And that judge with his cobra mouth may have spat truth. And I may be mad. No, don't. No, your hands are too clean to touch no. me. Say once you love me. Say it once. I'll never ask to hear it twice, nor for any kindness. And you shall take all I have. I interrupt a love scene, I believe. We can do without your adolescent mawkishness. You're a child. You'll both remember that. I've always loved you, Garth, and you've been kind. Don't spoil it now. Spoil it how? Because I love him. I didn't know it would happen. We danced together, and the world's all changed. I see you through a mist, and our father, too. If you brought this to nothing, I'd want to die. You better go. I know. Mio. Good night. Wait. Where will you go? Ah, as if it matters. I've saved a little money. No, thanks. And I love you. You've never said you love me. Why wouldn't I love you? You're clean and sweet. I've seen nothing clean or sweet these last ten years. I love you. I leave you that for what good it may do you. It's none to me. Then kiss me? No. But when it rains some spring on the planet Mercury, when the spring comes often, I'll meet you there, let's say. We'll wait for it. It may be some time to then. Go in, both of you. We'll wait here for the storm to pass. I tell you, sir, that I have a certain train to catch. And barely time to make it. Trains can wait. Nearly anything can wait, you'll find, only I can't. I'm the only one that can't because I've got no time. Who's the punk? His name's Romano. Huh? He's the son. What's he doing here? He just walked in on a kind of the stuff in the papers. Uh, now, if we had Shadow, we'd all be here. Who's Shadow? Shadow was just nobody. He took a trip on the river. It could happen to anybody. What do you want, truck? There's a car waiting up the street to take the judge home. Now, well, that's not necessary. No. You wouldn't want to let the judge walk, would you? The judge is going to ride where he's going with a couple of chauffeurs. And everything done in style. I want no hand in it. Anything happens to me happens to you, too. I know that. Keep your mouth out of it, then. You'd better keep that punk here tonight just for luck. Someone at the door. Open it. <gasps> Shadow! He's out of his grave! Keep your hands away from your pocket truck. You know me. You are listening to Best Plays, presenting Maxwell Anderson's Winter Set, starring Burgess Meredith and Maureen Stapleton. In a moment, we will resume with Act Two. 
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. We return to the Best Plays production of Maxwell Anderson's Winter Set, starring Burgess Meredith as Mio and Maureen Stapleton as Miriamne. And here again is John Chapman. You may remember that Winter Set was first produced in the fall of 1935. That was a good year in the theater. And there was a new group calling itself the New York Drama Critics Circle. The circle was going to give a prize to the best play of that year, and this was a momentous time. Up to then, nobody thought that one drama critic could agree with another one on anything. But the critics' circle came out of its huddle quite happily and announced that its very first prize was going to Maxwell Anderson for a winter set. So let's continue now with Act Two. There is an expression of horror and disbelief on Trock's face now as he stares at the man who has just entered the room. It is Shadow. White, blood-stained and gripping, who leans against the doorway, holding a gun in his hands. You said the doctor gave you six months to live. Well, I don't give you that much. That's what you had, six months, and so you start bumping off your friends to make sure he is six months. Shadow, don't! Don't! Thought me dead, didn't you, truck? Well, I nearly am, but something let me get up again and walk till I could find you. That's as far as I got, but I got here. Uh, 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 stay away from him. He needs me. help. He's going to fall. A man needs blood to keep going. I got this far and now I can't see. It runs out too fast, too fast when you got three slugs clean through you. I can't see. Show me where he is, you fools! He's here! I got him! God, oh God, I'm gonna die. Why does a man lie down? I wanna lie down. Help me, God. We'll take him in the other room and put him on the cot. He's still heavy. For all the blood he's lost. Shut the door! You won't come back again? I want the door shut! He was dead. And Romagna was dead too. Can't they keep dead men on the ground? No. They don't stand the ground. They don't stand the water. Why did you kill him? Stay away from me. I know you. Who am I? The name's Romagna. Yes. And Romagna was dead and Shadow was dead. And the time's come when you can't keep them down, these dead men, because they won't stay down. They come in with their heads shot off and their insides dragging. Watch that door, Trock. See? It's moving. Let me out of here! Order, gentlemen, order. The witness will remember that a certain decorum is essential in the courtroom. Now, what case is this you try? The case of the state against Bartolomeo Romagna for the murder of the paymaster. Who set that flash? Bailiff, clear the court. Call the witness. Call Shadow. He'll talk. You thought he was dead, Trock. He's going to get up again and talk. What do you want of me? You killed the paymaster. You killed the paymaster. You lie. It was Shadow killed. I Now I know. Now I know. Let me remind you of courtesy toward the witness. Let me remind you of courtesy toward the dead. Oh, let, let me go. Let me go. No. This is the thing I've hunted over the earth to find <laughs> out. Why did you let my father die? Uh, there are... There are things... A judge must not believe, though they press in on his brain. Justice once rendered in a clear burst of anger upon a common laborer, confessed an anarchist, the verdict found and the precise machinery of law invoked to know him guilty. Think what furor would rock the state if the court then flatly said, all this was lies, must be reversed. It's better. It's better as any judge can tell you in such cases holding the common good to be worth more than small injustice. To let the record stand, let one man die. For justice in the main is governed by opinion. Communities will have what they will have. And it's quite as well, after all, to be rid of anarchists. You will not repeat this? It will go no further? No. 
No further than the moon takes the tides. No further than the news went when he died. When you found him guilty and they flashed that round the earth. Right on talking, both of you. It won't get far, I guess. You'll see to that? I'll see to it. Maybe I lost my grip there just for a minute. That's all right. All right, see to it. And let the night speak fire. Let the city go out with a tide. For he was a man, and I know you now. And I have my day. Open it, Miriam. Yes, Father. It's the policeman, Father. What is it, sir? I'm looking for someone who might be here. Seen an old man around acting a little bit off? Oh, uh... Uh, Why, that's him there. Uh, what do you want with me? Oh, come on now. You're going home. Oh, yes, sir. I've lost my way. I'll say you have about 300 miles. Now, don't you worry. I'll get you back. I'm a person of some rank in my own city. I know that. One look at you and I'd know that. Well, if it isn't Truck. How are you, Truck? Very good, thanks. Got out yesterday again, I hear. That's right. Be good now, baby, or back you go. Yeah. And if we find any stiffs on the riverbank, uh, we'll know who to look for. Then look in the other room. I accuse that man of murder. What? Oh, it's you. What murder are you talking about? It was Truck Estrella that robbed the payroll 13 years ago and did the killing that my father died for. You know the Romagna case? Romagna was innocent and Truck Estrella guilty. That's old stuff, that Romagna case. And you're a professional kidder. No, no, I'm, I'm not kidding now. But you'll find a dead man there in the next room, and Truck Estrella killed him. He killed the paymaster long ago, and he killed Shadow tonight. Look, look, look for yourself. Have I got to drag him out here where you can see him? Look in that room. No, there's no one. Well, if the cadaver in here, I don't see it. When you make the charge of murder, it's better to have the corpus delecti, son. You're the kind that puts in fire alarms to see the engine. What's your name? Romagna. He's got the Romagna case on his brain. They're all in this together. Yes, and you too, Miriam. You've dreamed something, isn't it true? You've dreamed. Truly, there was no one. Do you want me to say it? The truth, Mio, there was no one there. Then I'll say it. I was dreaming. There was no one there. You watch yourself, chump, or you could run in. It's late, Judge. We better be going. Now, haven't you got a coat? Um... No, sir. I guess I'll have to lend you mine. Uh, watch your steps, sir. It's slippery here. Yeah. Where is Shadow? How is it that fool saw nothing when he looked inside? We took him to the back hall. We left him there. Ah. That's lucky for some of us. Is he out this time or is he still butting around? He's dead. That's perfect. Ship the carrion back in the river. The one that walks when he's dead, maybe he'll walk the distance for you. I can't stay for the show. You coming back? Well, if I come back, you'll see me. If I don't, you won't. Let the punk go far as he likes. Turn him loose. Let him go. He won't get far. Goodbye. Not now, Mio. Truck's out there. Let him go. He'll get killed. Master Romagna can run his own campaign. I can take a death if I have to. Go on, tell your story, Romana. Only watch your step. For I warn you, Trock's out gunning. And you may not walk very far. My father died in your place. You could have saved him. You were one of the gang. Well, go on, tell them. You certainly owe me nothing. You, Miriamne. You lied. You trapped me into it. Neo, he's my brother. I couldn't give them my brother. Oh. Quite right. Oh, the bright, ironical gods. What fun they have in heaven. When a man prays hard for any gift, they give it. And then one more to boot that makes it useless. You might have danced with some other stranger. I know. You know you've chosen some other evening to sit outside in the rain. It had to be this. All my life long, I wanted only one thing. To say to the world and to prove it. That the man you killed was clean and true and full of love. And I can say that now and give my proof. And now you stick a girl's face between me and the rights I've sworn the dead shall have of me. When you ask too much. 
Well, your brother can take his chance. We're parted anyway by the same dark wind that blew us together. I shall say what I have to say, and I'm not welcome here. Don't go now. He's waiting somewhere out there on the street. Well, is this any safer? Let the winds blow, the four winds of the world. Take us to the four winds. Goodbye. I was watching out the window and saw you turn back. Yes, I looked up the street. Our old friend Trock hunches patiently under the warehouse here. I was sure of that. Yes. Wouldn't it be better if you came back in the house? No. I'm afflicted with claustrophobia. I prefer to die in the open, seeking air. Let me walk beside you then. Please. If I stay beside you, he wouldn't dare. Then again, he might. We don't speak the same language, many of you. I betrayed you. Forgive me. I wish I knew this region. There's probably a path along the... No, no, no. Shadow went that way. Ah, That's true. Stay and talk with me. If it happens, it's my fault. Not at all, sweet. You warned me to stay away. Mio! Mio, you must wait here or go inside. I, I know you don't trust me and I haven't earned your trust You're young enough to seek truth, and there is no truth, and I know that. But I shall call the police and see that you get safely off. It's a little late for that. I shall try. And let me remind you what will happen. The police will ask some questions. When they're answered, they'll ask some more, and before they're done with it, your son will be implicated. Must he be? I shall not keep quiet. Still, I'll go. He's not on my conscience. I'm not on yours. But you could make it easier so easily. Right. I thought there was an ordinance forbidding music on this street. That's my only son playing. Mio, let him live. Let him live. His chance of survival is better than mine, I'd say. I'll go. I don't urge it. No. I put my son's life in your hands. When you're gone, that may come to your mind. Well, there was a war in heaven once. And all the angels were on one side, and all the demons were on the other. And since that time, disputes have raged among the learned concerning whether the angels won or the demons. Maybe the angels won after all. I could love your father. I love him. He's afraid because he's old. The less one has to lose, the more he's afraid. Suppose... Suppose that one had only a short stub end of life, or he held a flashlight with the batteries run down till the bulb was dim, and he knew that he could live while the glow lasted. Well, how would he live this last dim quarter of an hour before he went, minus all recollection, to grow in grass between cobblestone? Let me put my arms around you, Mio. Then if anything comes, it's for me too. Yes. Let's suppose that this circle is charmed to be safe until he steps from this lighted space into dark. Time pauses. High eternity grows in one quarter hour in which to live. Let me look around the corner. No, Doc. No. That'll blast our eternity, blow it to bits. This is forever here where we stand. I ask you, Mariani, how do we spend a forever? You're frightened. Yes. So much that time stands still. Why didn't I speak when the policeman was here? I failed you in that one moment. No, your brother's life were mine. You couldn't give it, and I wouldn't want it. And if I should go on living, we're cut apart by that brother of yours. Oh, Mio, Mio, I love you. And I love you. But in case my life went on beyond this barrier, then Garth will run his risk of dying. Oh, he's punished me, oh. Mm. His life's been torment to him. Let him go. For my sake, me, I wish I could. I wish that I'd never seen him or you. 
I've steeped too long in this thing. It's in my teeth and bones I can't let go or forget. Oh, God, deliver me from the body of this death I've dragged behind me all these years. Mary Omni, Mary Omni. Yes. If you love me, would you teach me a treason to what I am and have been till I learn to live like a man? I think that I'm waking from a long trauma of hate and fear and death that's hemmed me from my birth, and I glimpse a life to be lived in hope. But it's young in me. I can't get free or forgive. Teach me how to live and forget to hate. He would have forgiven. He? Your father. My father? Oh. Well. You may think it's strange. I've never remembered that. He'd have forgiven. There's no more to say. I've groped long enough through these Everglades of old revenges. Here the road ends. Mariani, give me your arms. I love you. I love you. And remember this. If I should die, this half hour was our eternity. I came here seeking light in darkness and running from the dawn, and I've stumbled on a morning. Father? Yes. Rock something. He wouldn't let me pass. Mio, save yourself if you can. Yes. Could I make it across the street down that path? You couldn't. But if I stay here, I'll be a rat in a dead fall. One quick dash, I'll be a... No. You'll not wait long. He told me that. I'll try it. And now... Now all you silent powers that make the sleet and dark and never yet have spoken, give us a sign. Let the throw be ours this once, on this longest night, when the winter sets his foot on the threshold leading up to spring and enters with remembered cold. Let fall some mercy with the rain. We are two lovers here in your night. We want to live. Let me go with you, Mio. No, kiss me. Kiss me and I'll go alone. Oh, lover, keep safe. Goodbye. Hey! Mio! It seems that you mistake. Mio, let me help you. Mio, if you go, I shall die with you. No, it's better to stay alive. I wanted to stay alive because of you. And I leave you that. And what he said to me dying. I love you. I'll love you after I die. And tomorrow I'll still love you. As I've loved the stars that I'll never see. And all the mornings that might have been yours and mine. Miriamne, you taught me that. Oh, if only I'd never seen you, that you could live. Oh, that's blasphemy. Oh, God. There might have been an easier way out of here. Hey, you didn't want me to die, did you? Miriamne, did you send me away? Never. Oh, never. Oh, forgive me. Kiss me. Oh, I got blood on your lips. I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter. I... Sorry. What is it, Father? What's done may well trouble your sleep, my son. If ever again you sleep. Oh, Mio. Mio, I'd have gone to die myself. You must hear this. Mio, I'd have died to help you. Oh, you must listen, sweet. You must hear it. I can die too, see? Mary Amney, come back! You! There, you in the shadows! You killed him to silence him, but I'm not silent. All that he knew, I know. And I'll tell it tonight. Tonight, tell it and scream it through all the streets. The truck's a murderer. Truck is still a murderer. You fool. Don't touch me. Look, Mio. They killed me too. And you can believe me now. Mio, you can believe I wouldn't hurt you. Because I'm... Dying. Well, why doesn't he answer me? Now he'll never know. Oh. Wait. Only this. 
Why must she be a fool? They were wiser than you and I to die when they were young. Oh, Miriam, Mio, Mio, my son, know this where you lie. This is the glory of earthborn men and women. Not to cringe, never to yield, but standing take defeat, implacable and defiant. Die unsubmitting. I wish that I'd die so long ago. Before you're old, Garth, you'll wish that you had died as they have. On this star, in this hard star adventure, not knowing what the fires mean to right and left, nor whether a meaning was intended or presumed, a man can stand up and look out blind and say in all these turning lights, I find no clue, only a masterless night, and in my blood no certain answer, yet is my mind my own. Yet is my heart a cry toward something dim in distance, which is higher than I am, and makes me emperor of the endless dark, even in seeking. What odds and ends of life men may live otherwise? Let them live and then go out, as I shall go and eat you. Our part is only to bury them. Come, take her up. They must not lie here. You have just heard the Best Plays production of Winterset by Maxwell Anderson, starring Burgess Meredith and Maureen Stapleton. And here is your host, dramatic critic John Chapman, with a closing word. This was truly a best play, wasn't it? Next Sunday evening, we shall have another, which is truly a best. This is Paul Osborne's lovable fantasy on borrowed time, about a little boy and his grandfather who get death up a tree, old Mr. Brink himself and nobody looks better up a tree. The little boy's aunt takes a dim view of what Gramps and little Pud are up to, and they take a dim view of her. Our cast for next week's best play will be another distinguished one. Parker Fennelly in the role of Gramps, and Mildred Natwick playing the part of the aunt. This is Chapman now, saying goodbye until then. Well, Anderson's Winter Set starred Burgess Meredith as Mio and Maureen Stapleton as Miriamne. Others in the cast were Joseph DeSantis as Troc, Edwin Jerome as Judge Gaunt, Roger DeCoven as Esdras, Joseph Julian as Garth, Ralph Bell as Shadow, Bill Lipton as Carr, Gilbert Mack as Lucia, and Matt Crowley as the policeman. Music was selected by Hal Venho. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Your announcer is Fred Collins. Tonight, it's Meet the Press on NBC.